you know, when people first start out wanting to lose weight, there, and there have been a lot of studies, and I publish data on what we call very low calorie ketogenic diets. And that's where we give protein at the, uh, the dose we use, which is, you know, if you're thinking, quote, macros around uh, how much you, energy you burn per day, typically we have people eat 10 to 15% of their daily energy requirement is protein. And if we keep carbs really low, it might be 5% of your daily energy requirement for protein. Yeah, those up, you're at 20%. And you, we can feed people, and you, how many of you remember Oprah Winfrey went on a, a packaged formula diet for five months, lost 63 pounds, bragged about it on stage, and it was, she looked great, and she was incredibly successful. But she skipped all the educational part of the program she was supposed to be attending. And then she went back to eating healthy, and to everybody's horror, hers included, gained it all back within less than a year. Um, because eating, you know, 600 calories a day, it can help people cut off pounds really quickly, but it's not, nobody can live on 600 calories per day long term. Uh, and if her daily energy need was 1,800 calories a day for maintenance, and it might have been that or higher, and she's eating 600, there's 1,200 that is not, you can't get it from the air. And if you're not eating carbs and you're not eating more, more extra protein, it's got to come from fat. And that's horrifying. Because that, you know, if it's 600 calories from other things and 1,800 total, that means almost 70% of her daily ener energy intake has to come from fat when she gets to weight stability. If she was wanted to stay inner size 10 genes, not get any smaller or bigger, she would have to eat a high fat diet. And that's so hard for those of us who've been, and I as a physician was told, well, high fat diets are dangerous. I was taught that. Um, you know, it's, it, it's very hard for people to get past that. And we call it the fear of fat. Uh, and it's, it's a learned problem because if I go back a bunch of generations when my, you know, my ancestors originally came from Scandinavia and before the potato was imported from the New World, they didn't have a whole lot of carbs. So particularly in, you know, in the wintertime, they were living on, on fish and, and meat and dairy. Uh, they were eating a high-fat diet and somehow yeah, that seemed to, they seemed to get by on that. Uh, but it's just the, the, since the the diet heart hypothesis that, that you know, put the fear of saturated fat and total fat into you know, our hearts and minds that, that we've had to, to struggle with this kind of concern. It's a valid concern. We get the question a lot. Yeah, and, and just remember, too, think of it this way. There's three macronutrients, right? What we eat is either carbohydrates, proteins, or fat. So if we're taking away the carbs and we don't want to eat the fat, that's protein. And if anyone has ever tried to consume a really high protein diet, right, and not necessarily, and not just consume maybe 600 calories, what happens? You feel crummy, right? You're tired, you know, and then people are like, well, you know, I tried Adkins a long time ago and I just didn't feel good. And that's because they were just trying to consume protein, right? And not enough sodium. <laughs> and, yeah. Together it's a, yeah. And so, you know, we, we, we can't have a high protein diet and expect people to feel really good. And the fear of fat also comes into because people are like, what does that even look like? Like, you know, people have this image of what a high fat diet looks like in their head. And once again, I'll have to congratulate and applaud our health coaches do a wonderful job of helping people understand it doesn't mean you just eat butter. 